Welcome to the final episode of our Sleepaway series, everyone. This episode, we are diving into a really great discussion with our guest, Nicole Trainer, and we have some really stellar fanfic for you. But before we get to the episode, here's what to expect in our call to action. At the end of the show, you'll hear about the latest news on the Starwall Odyssey campaign Ryan is editing. I'm doing Christmas cards again this year, so you'll have details about that. And even a bit of news about a potential newsletter that we're thinking about putting together. You can hear this as well as our normal podcast sign-off and thanks to our patrons. Yep, uh, so definitely stay tuned for that, as well as the series outtakes after the credits. For now, please enjoy the show, everybody. To our discussion episode. Last time we finished our session zero for Sleep Away. This episode we'll be discussing the character creation process. We are excited to welcome back Nicole Trainer, aka Faye from the Misfits of Space podcast. Uh, can you reintroduce yourself, Nicole, and um, tell us a little bit about the character you made in our last episodes? Yes. Hi, I'm Nicole. Um, yeah, um, I'm like. Amelia said, I'm on the Misfits of Space podcast, where probably my most famous, I put in quotes, uh, work, um, <laughs> or, or alternately hovering in some discords. Um, and, and you can summon me um, if you discuss enemies to lovers, because I think I pop up in all of those conversations. Um, <laughs> you have like a, an extra sense for when it's happening. <laughs> People are discussing it. And it's a shame I'm so not in video because I'm wearing my enemies to lovers or nothing at all t-shirt today. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, and last time we were playing, we were creating our slipaway characters, and I was pl going to play Baron, the lifeguard, who has a name that is easy to yell. Um, they <laughs> definitely set them up to be someone who's always anticipating stuff with their watchful eyes and coiled body. Um, they are a lighthouse in the darkness for their gender, um, and their childhood fear was a current too fast to outswim. Uh, they have a little brother that's waiting for them when they're out of camp, and they keep working here because they want to save people. Um, I guess I'll go through the questions you both asked me for my character. Sure. Okay. Um, and then, like, for relationships with Soliloquy, the crafter, Soliloquy wants to know why Baron abandoned the craft, and um, I lied. And magic cannot be used to lie, so Baron's magic casting got weaker. Um and then it got to the point where Baron couldn't use it to save people. Mm -hmm. And from Margaret James, the song leader, what have you said to me, but never to anyone else? And Baron asked Margaret James for help. They said, I need help. I can't do it. I can't save everyone. And they've never asked anyone else for help. Oh, That's yep. so good. Yep. Uh, Ryan, do you want to tell us about Margaret James? Absolutely. So Margaret James Smith, uh, you always have to say Margaret James uh, when you're referring to to her, and uh, otherwise she'll get a little snippy with you. It's Margaret James with a hyphen. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret hyphen James. Hyphen James. <laughs> Margaret hyphen James. <clears throat> um, yeah, so Margaret James is the, the song leader. Uh, she's got her gentle eyes and uh, body built for strong hugs, um, but she's got a little bit of an edge. Uh, as a blackberry blossom gender. Um, and she's got all sorts of childhood fears that are going to be picked upon. I'm sure I picked all of the above for <laughs> that one. So uh, I'm excited for that. Um, but uh, her singing voice is intimate and honest, like a promise to a friend, which really fits with the theme of our camp. Uh, we have a, a nice honesty and mm -hmm. and anti-lie sentiment going on uh, with the camp that we created. 
Um, and then the two songs that I'm able to do is uh, a group song, No Outside Force Could Ever Interrupt, which is just fantastic. Uh, and then a story, a song that campers always listen to in a quiet, rapt focus. Um, so get those kids calmed down in a stressful situation uh, would be nice. And then for the relationship questions that I was asked, um, so between a soliloquy, um, how did I save a soliloquy? So uh, my saying uh, brought her back from the brink of walking into the lake uh, in a daze. Oof. Yeah. And then um, the lake is bad. It the is lake bad. is very bad. Yeah. Uh, and then with Baron, I was asked, are you still in love with me? Um and uh, Margaret James's answer would be, my feelings have never changed. So good. It's so good. Uh, yeah. So, oh, so good. Oh, there's just like so many. This is always my favorite part is like when there's a billion strings to pull on. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially heart strings. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia, can you tell us about your character? Sure. Um. My character is Soliloquy. Unclear if that's her real name or not. Uh, I picked the crafter. Um, so the when I chose my name, it was a word that is not normally a name. Um, her look ha- is gleaming eyes and a body built for listening. Uh, my gender is priestess femme. And my childhood fear was drowning in a lake and no one hearing, which is why uh margaret james saving me with their their song was important mm-hmm. um i had to choose my craft and i chose augury so um interpreting omens <laughs> mm-hmm. uh and then two traits of the craft it cannot be used to lie and it cannot be used with modern technology um and the questions i answered for other people uh for Baron, um, how did I save you from metaphorically drowning? And I said, uh, soliloquy was at a point where she was like reading into everything as a sign of something. So it, you know, it would rain and it would be like, what does that mean? Well, you know, the water cycle is happening. Um, so, you know, they're using the yellow napkins instead of the blue ones because the yellow ones were on sale. It doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, because people aren't really aware that magic exists, um, it was important that, you know, Baron used to do this and can't anymore, um, but was able to to tell me to take a step back. Um, and for Margaret James, the question was, what song best represents our relationship? Uh, and I picked a classic Renaissance song, El Grio. Um, which is about a cricket that likes to sing all the time. Um, and when all of the birds leave, the cricket is is still there, um, holding out even when it's hot, even when it's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so it sings good. for the love of it. So good. So good. And I just realized we both saved you from drowning. Yes. Ooh, so one good. physically, one metaphysically. Metamor- yeah. And right, right. Not so, the way you um, thought either. Ooh. No. So like... I think that the lake is going to be yeah a big part of this. Should we talk a little bit about our camp too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, camp. so we made the summer court mm-hmm. uh, as our summer camp. <laughs> um, it has a culture of honesty and economic prosperity, mm-hmm. which we said is not necessarily like this is a bunch of wealthy campers, but like the camp has a a good endowment, so like we can do whatever we want really like mm-hmm. there's you know money is no object we could have the best costumes and you know grounds Absolutely. and all of that kind of stuff it's important because it's a LARP we're, camp yeah a LARP summer camp <laughs> yes yes um Way to so we are able to there, yep. <laughs> yeah it is it is a LARP based summer camp um where most people are in character and uh just real dramatic <laughs> oh so good uh what did we what did we add here i'm trying to remember oh, which yeah. things were so like the uh the 
the place where everybody sleeps and whatnot was yes. built over so, uh, some fairy houses. Yes. Um, and where the fairy houses used to be built. Yeah, where yep. the fairy houses used to be built. Um, uh, there is a uh, hidden, uh, like kissing cove. Mm-hmm. In the woods, just south of the uh, the oldest tree in the forest, um, but that's that's the place where the witch was sighted at yeah. some point, <gasps> which spooky. Um, and we've also got a uh, a hill um, off on the the eastern side of the camp um, that is also it's got a field at the top of the hill that's perfect for watching the stars. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the performing field, uh, the performance stage is right across the field from the bunks, right by the campfire, the mm-hmm. fire pit. Mm-hmm. And when there's the the path from the lake that we don't remember where it leads to anymore. Yeah, the old path that just kind of goes off yeah. from the lake and nobody goes down there anymore. Yeah, we don't know. And a, a hill for stargazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't, and we don't know what happened last year. Something happened, and we don't know what. Yeah. It's been too long. And then I realized with the witch, we have the witch of the week camper. I know. I was like, does the witch of the week camper always hang out looking for the witch? I betcha. We'll find out in our our fan fiction section. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff. We got three campers we made too. Um, Yes. (laughs) Toby, the overflowing butterfly. Um, Oberon, the in-between pill bug. And uh, Cersei, the full dragon. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That says a lot about those three kids right there. I think so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Toby always calls Margaret James, Margaret hyphen James. Margaret mm-hmm. hyphen James. Margaret hyphen James. The whole stories so we good. wrote up for these campers, like, I love everybody already. Uh-huh. Uh, they're, uh, they're amazing. <laughs> they're love amazing. them. <laughs> they're so good. Yes, I will fight the Linworm for you. <laughs> uh-huh. Right? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Uh, well, before we can get to fanfic, uh, we've got a few questions to go okay. through. So let's go ahead and dive right into a segment that we are calling D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. In this segment, we like to talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process, how it works in this system, how it compares to other games. Uh, but first, we like to get the most cliche podcasting question out of the way. Um uh, how did you first get into RPGs? So I actually have a kind of weird way I went into them. Um, I actually, uh, I went to my public library when I was 10. I was out of the kids section. I went into the fantasy section for the first time. And there on the shelf were library bound editions of the ElfQuest comics. Mm. Um, and yeah, like this was like 1990, like comics were getting big, but like comic stores were not friendly. And I find these ElfQuest comics, which are full of like, adventure and excitement mm-hmm. and wolves and elves and romance and all this stuff and i just got sucked in like immediately and like i like my parents are buying me the comics my parents bought like everything they could for elf quest for me which included the 1990s chaosium role-playing game oh oh yeah um I, it, this was like a super crunchy game though because it's chaosium <laughs> in the 90s and like, yeah like, seriously <laughs> But like the idea to be able to be like, I can create a character based in this world and play them and like, you know, make all these like rules that aren't just like, well, I said Mm -hmm. so and I did it. Um, So I I got into it like that way, but I didn't have anyone to play with until I went to high school. And um, this is hilarious because there was I have curly hair and there was a girl in my class who used to pull my hair. Um, (laughs) And somehow it came out and she her brother played like first edition D&D. So she mm-hmm. invited me to play with her. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. And um, we became best friends. And that's how I started role playing was because of ElfQuest comics and a girl who used to pull my hair in my science class. Amazing. Yeah. And then like, I, you know, I've gone through things where it's like, okay, in college, I was a biochemistry major. So I had to, I had to stop for a while and I went back and I was doing, instead of doing D&D, I did Savage Worlds for a couple years. Mm-hmm. Um, at, hilariously with that same girl who was my best friend, <laughs> we got oh. back in touch and started <laughs> playing again. Um, and then, and then I got pregnant and had kids. So I had to stop for a while again. And then um, this, this most recent time 
in like 2015, a local comic book store started hosting my, a different friend from high school moved to my area and was running a Tuesday game for Star Wars. And I'm like, well, mm. I'd like to go play that. Um, and that's where it's been since. So, oh, so and now, now I just play, now I am far removed from D&D and look for the most emotionally impactful games I can play. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Away. <laughs> oh, so good. What do you look for in a system as far as character creation goes? Like what pieces need to be there for, for great characters to happen in your opinion? So I look for systems that let me put like a character I have in mind to paper. Um, I've started getting away from more of like the crunch and the mechanics because that this is this might shock y'all, but the mechanics don't matter as much for me as the role playing. Um, like, what? <laughs> I know. I could have seen that coming. <laughs> Um, so it's more like how, how can I make these characters relate to each other? How can they be vulnerable? How can they be imperfect? You know, um, I don't, I don't want to just make heroes. Like I do want to make a hero, but I want the heroes to either like have a gray side or a vulnerability or usually they want to kiss the villain. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, and I look, I want, I want games like that. So I really like PBTA games where they, you know, like the characters, like where you tie the characters together or like fate, where you ask the questions, like, how do we, how do our characters know each other and how Mm -hmm. that brings into play? So I really want those inter-character relationship stuff going. Yeah. I I like the, the nice juicy relationships that you can get in some of these games. I, I know there's, there's like a few games that do the relationship, but it feels like very surface level. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the, some of these, like like this game especially, my goodness, uh, it it really digs in there. Yeah, uh, then, with with just a, a simple question. Yeah, like evocative questions, like, mm-hmm. and you know, what, what have you told me that you've told no one else can mean so many things. Yeah, and it's so good. Yeah. It's it's nice when it's a little open ended than like that. Yeah. You know, instead yeah. of like, um, you know, something very like, oh, what what cool thing did we do in the past? And that was like and it'll never come up again. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just backstory. It's, you know, important. Yeah. Plot points. Yeah. Yep. This is this is something that like it, it's it can be a good thing or a bad thing and it's going to come up. And this is the basis, you know. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Ones that leave answers that leave more questions to be answered. Mm hmm. And pull on those strings. Yeah. That's that's what I want. I want <laughs> strings. <laughs> right. Um, so we like to look at character sheets and kind of discuss the intention behind them. Um, and what it tells us about the game. These ones are are a little bit different because they're kind of like more playbook style mm-hmm. um, sort of lists more than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, how do you think that affects like how you play the game or what you think about as you're making characters? I, I think they're very well organized. Like in a lot of systems, this isn't as open-ended as like a D&D game where you're like, I'm going to be a thiefling bard with a criminal background these Mm -hmm. are very specific characters like the crafter the lifeguard like the life you know it's like this is you get a very good idea of what that character will play out Mm -hmm. um like is it emotional vulnerability is it the selflessness like there's a each character like the questions the build up even like the gender and the eyes and like what they look like all lead to this really tight character formation i mean there's a lot of open-endedness there like mm-hmm. yeah i play crafters a lot and my crafters are completely different from amelia's crafters but there's still yeah. like a feel to them and you get how they fit into the world and how they interact with the world and other characters immediately just just with the quite the moves like mm-hmm. really build that like okay this is how my character is supposed these are the roles my character is supposed to assume mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's it's really nice, like like especially then when you see something like choose your name and it's not just a blank field. Yeah. Right. It's like you've got these very on theme name choices for each of these different playbooks. And like they they're so evocative of like who this character is as a person just before you even do anything else with that character. Right. A name that is easy to yell immediately tells you so much about a character. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And I, I really liked like having some guidance on what kind of name to give this character to as somebody that has a really hard time with naming characters. Right. <laughs> um, that there were some like, you know, and, and that those names, yeah, really tell you something about who this person is or what kind of, you know, like a name that's not normally a name leans into the fact that this character is supposed to be kind of eccentric. Yeah. 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 And and then, you know, combining it like, well, is that their real name or is it a cam name? Like that's right. so mm-hmm. much mystery and so good. Yeah, exactly. And and then it goes down even to like, um, you know, you you go through the gender and then the childhood fear. Oh. That's 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 the point that hit me that this is not a like uh, you know, seven year old Scooby Doo uh style of game right with some of those questions of oh, like yeah i i was afraid of drowning and no one hearing me to save me right and that and like that's like literally or metamorphically like it's so good yeah it's so good there's a there's a lot of good stuff in here yeah. um but then like uh and the moves are very evocative of what you're going to be doing in this game too yeah right because right? that's what you're playing towards is you're playing towards those moves you're trying to trigger those moves and yeah. goodness there's a lot of uh really intense things you can do uh in pretty much all of these categories yeah yeah and, and like yeah they're all so emotionally impactful like the weak moves it's like okay i need this token but do i want to destroy a friendship yeah right I, oh yeah it, it the the belonging outside of belonging system of games kind of lures you into that sort of gameplay of like i feel like i need to make a bad choice at this point to get that token yeah and it, it's um, definitely yeah it's just going to lead you down that that rabbit hole of like, well, I need another token. Yeah, but they're, but there's so good moments too, though. Like, yeah, it's just it, like, yeah, like, and it's not like the role play options for them are so good. Mm-hmm. Like, it just it it drives the story so much, and it's yeah, they're heartbreaking some of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. But yeah, it it definitely does tell a story. Like yeah. it. It it gives you uh like your your creative mind flowing right mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. the like very evocative descriptions of all these things, and then it like kind of rips your your heart out a bit with the childhood fears, um and then it gives you all these n- delicious nuggets to play with. Yeah, and I love that they're open ended enough for like interpretation in so many ways but mm-hmm. so evocative at the same time like you know yeah. how this will hurt and you can choose how that will hurt you mm-hmm. oh, it's so yeah bad. exactly like yeah. some of these moves i was looking at i was like i can i can already picture this scene in my head right and like mm-hmm. getting really uh intense emotions over it yeah yeah i just there were some in there that like we were just like, ooh, I don't ever want to pick that one, but also I really want to pick that. I <laughs> like, <know. laughs> uh-huh. They're so good. Yeah, it's so good. Well, how do we think character creation in Sleepaway stacks up to other systems that we've played? Uh, it's it's one of my favorites. Like I love I love PBTA character creation. I like mm-hmm. the 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 driven options where it's i like the pick list where it's like okay this gives me enough to make a choice and to be evocative and the pick list and sleep away i think are my favorite because it's not just like here's a list of names you can pick but the descriptions of the names and i i i love how everything ties together and as you play as you create with like the campsites and everything where we're like oh my gosh all the the, the culture of honesty and we have all these questions about honesty and this and that and it's just everything ties together so well mm-hmm. yeah yeah, I mean, we were really able to latch on to the culture of honesty in so many places. Mm-hmm. I I really loved that we were able to tie all of that together. Yeah. Like, it totally wasn't necessary, but it, it's kind of poetic how all of these things just kind of lined up, right? Yeah, and, definitely. 
And even stuff like where we created like the witchy character, like the witchy camper. And we're like, oh, the witch was seen in the woods. Like it comes back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, absolutely. I I wonder if uh, if that character is uh, trying to uh, figure out the name of the witch. Right. And we can figure out what the witch is doing. And maybe... Yeah, maybe maybe <gasps> one time uh, a name will be picked that is the name of that witch oh. and <gasps> that shenanigans happen. Right. Oh, yes. there's so much you could do that. Does she become uh-huh. the witch then? Like, uh-huh. oh, oh, they're so good. <sighs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even introduce that as a possibility, Ryan? Because <laughs> it's fun. It's so good, though. That's, That's the so best good. part. Oh. <laughs> It's like I, we make the camp, like we make the campground map, but at the same time, it's also like here are the places where it'll hurt me the most. Uh huh. Right. It's so good. Yep. Oh, uh, how does the process of character creation reinforce the feel of this game? And and more importantly, because we've talked about kind of that first part of it, um, how does it set the expectations for what we're gonna see playing this game? Oh my god. Well, it's. Almost immediately, like you've got the double gut punch of like these emotionally vulnerable questions and like moves and stuff with the same time reminding you of the horror. Like mm-hmm. right away, it's like, OK, why, why did I fall in love with you um, is a question. But you also yeah. have a childhood fear of being flayed by wolves. Like mm-hmm. and it's it's mm-hmm. right there. Like it's all the, like, you know, like, oh, and here's like your strong moves are what you're best at, but your weak moves are like the opposite of what you like, you know, mm-hmm. your fears. And it's like, you lean into that. So it's just, it's so good for driving the, you know, like the emotional vulnerability, you know, the explorations of who you are, discovering mm-hmm. what your character is like these, these found family dynamics, like protecting the kids, like the campers are so important. Um, but also like, there's still like that, that horror that's out there. Like we got to protect the campers from the landworm, from the wolves, from the bone parade, from the strangeness. Yeah. And there's and these I, little reminders of it. Yeah. And I do like how, like I came out of character creation. I have no idea what this lindworm is. No. And yeah. like, I think that it's supposed to be that way. Right. Yeah. So okay. like, yeah, it does set expectations of I'm, afraid of some of the things that we'll be able to encounter and then there's this existential linworm that no idea it what it's capable of and that that kind of is what's supposed to be happening in this game right and i i like the way for the linworm like the linworm acts but it's critical you never role play as the linworm you just mm-hmm. draw cards and interpret what the linworm does there's a table and like there's some horrible stuff that can happen but it's like nobody makes decisions for the linworm we just the linworm acts and we interpret what it does which adds to that cards. whole yeah and it adds to that feel too like there's no like it's an unknowable thing, and this is just the lindworm is acting, and we decide. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll read it an example. Let me go to the page because they, you know, like the the hearts. Uh, you know, uh, you get the ten of hearts. You get found family, caring connection. Hold tight to what you care about. Compared to like the the eight of diamonds, sudden pain, sharp unease, coyotes howling in the darkness. So we, you know, we we draw a card for the lindworm. And we have to think mm. about what that means. How does that act? How does that reflect in play? But yeah. you don't, we don't decide what the linworm does. The linworm acts and we do it. It's it's almost like the linworm is the unseen GM. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And And the fact that you start the game by inviting the linworm to play with you. Yeah. And then you wait 30 seconds before you even play the game. Uh huh. That, that's, that's chilling. Crazy. That sets a tone. So it's like there's all this stuff, and it's just, and you wait that 30 seconds of silence for the linworm. It's got to be hope. like the longest 30 seconds. Oh my God. I'm like thinking about it right now. <laughs> Can you imagine playing this game at a summer oh, camp? Oh my God. Oh my gosh. In the dark. No. Right? It's even like a lantern. And a fire. Yeah, well, you've got a lantern, you got enough light to see, but you're playing it in the uh the empty bunk and yeah. outside out all the windows you can see outside, but it's pitch dark, like in the middle of nowhere, pitch dark, yeah. right? We have the stars at best. You got the stars at best, yeah. Oh, so good. 
Yeah, All those that's like some ten candles nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the Indianapolis murder basement Gen Con experience right oh there. Oh my gosh, oh. yeah, <laughs> that was so scary. Um, <laughs> oh. But yeah, but I, I feel like the Sleepaway is not a game I want to play with just anybody though. Like there is, mm-hmm. this is intense no. and it's super like emotional, and I I want to be able to I feel safe with people when I play this. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I can I can easily see this going off the rails with the wrong group, but like oh. with with the right group, uh, with with the right synergy. Oh goodness! Yeah, mm-hmm. get you into all those like visceral uh, feelings. Yeah, yeah. Because and as you play, like if you play in person, like there's stuff like there's like the rituals you do. It's like okay, burn this. You know, car- rip this card with your teeth is like a yeah. response to like a Lindworn move. Cut these threads you have tied together stuff. Like it it builds this sense of like foreboding and danger and hurry, hurry, hurry. We have to save what we can. But also mm-hmm. like yeah. physically ripping a card with your teeth is just, oh my God. Right. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Seriously. This is just like, there's just so much here that it's like, I want that. Right. Yeah. I want that. Yeah. Oh, I also want that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in this system? Uh, and, and inversely, what's your favorite part? So I, this might be me. Like, I think that this is for the game that it is. This is a perfect character creation. But it's a very specific game. Like this won't work mm-hmm. if you just want to have, oh, I just want to have an adventure, you know, or tell a silly story, whatever. It's a very specific sort of game to play. Like the, you know, we've said like you're those emotionally vulnerable, those queer camp characters fighting to save campers from the linworm. Like this mm-hmm. is very specifically designed to tell that story. So if you're going to be like, well, I want a silly fluffy thing, if it, it won't work for anything else. Yeah. But for what it is, it's so good. Like it's it, it really does hit a lot of points. Yeah. Like it's it's perfectly designed to be what it is. And you cannot it's not open ended that you can't t- like you could probably like do a hack of it and design a game based off of it or whatever, but it's mm-hmm. not like everybody wants to shove D D into everything. You cannot do that with sleep away. No. Which not is yeah. and I think that's perfect. I think it is exactly what I want it to be. Yeah, that's fine with me. <laughs> I, I- I think the only thing, the only complaint I have is there, there needs to be more counselors. That would be a <laughs> I, I want, I want more fun things to play. So like, like on, uh, oh. like repeat plays, I want more playbooks. So right? there is, there is stuff for that. Um, there is Ooh. the uncanny expansion. There are a couple books on itch. Um, and then there's options like for strange characters, because like, this is a, this is a game where it's a good, it's highly probable your character might die you can come back as a strangeness character or as a different character mm. um one of my favorites is the moth maiden where you have died and you come back and you have half your abilities but you don't remember who you were and like oh, wow. like you know like why why are you here so there's there is still that with it so yeah there are oh. more there is more oh. out there amazing <laughs> Like, this is great, but I want more. <laughs> and there is more. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I have the uncanny yeah. expansion. Very cool. Okay. Are we ready? I'm ready. Are we ready? I've been bracing myself for two hours now. I know. I've been trying not to, like, do too much ahead of time as uh-huh. we're, like, talking about this. I'm trying to save it. Um, Let's discuss how this plays out. What is our, our fanfic? Oh. Oh gosh, there's so much we can do. There's so much. I know. It's like I don't even know where to start, <laughs> right? Like, with some... what we're talking about. Right? Like it's just um I think obviously something has to happen with Witch of the Week uh-huh. and this mm-hmm. witch that was spotted in the kissing grove. One hundred percent. I think, yeah, I think our Witch of the Week stumbles upon the witch's true name. Yeah. And, <laughs> and what does that do? Like, yeah. yeah, didn't like does our camper take that name then oh, as okay. like the last week of camp? Like, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, does the camper move on? Does the camper become embraced by the strangeness? Does the camper become the witch? Yeah, like, there's there's a lot there. Like, and then it would be up to us to try to save this camper, right? Yeah, before before this camper gets lost in like lost lost right yeah right 
Oh, yeah. And we have to protect the other campers because, you know, Toby's going to be following Mongo uh-huh. and James around. Yeah. Right. All right. Like, I got to keep everybody else safe. So, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. I think Hikate that week. Or no, we don't know the name because they took the name. Faye took yeah. the name and we don't know it. We can't find yeah. Faye right. until we know their name. So it's like, oh, it's like the worst Rumpelstiltskin. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh wow. Rumpel. Yeah. So it's a whole like mystery, like, like maybe there's some, uh, there's, there's something that, uh, this person stumbled upon. Right. I was like, oh, that sounds like a cool name. I think I'll take that one next. Yeah. And cause we, it's built on the fairies. Like we have the fae yep. present and they took, they took yeah. their name. We've got that, that weird don't go there place yeah. off the, off the <gasps> path. We've oh, got, is that why? Is that why you don't go there? Like that's where maybe. you take names. Like that's like a renaming area. Maybe. <sighs> oh, it's so good. And like or, there's all yeah. this. Who knows? Yeah. And like there's the strangeness too. Like the Our Lady Oubliette who makes people forget things. Like mm-hmm. is right. it, is the witch, a, you know, the witch an agent of the Our Lady Oubliette? Well, we already know that, like, we don't know what happened last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. It's so good. That's wild. Yeah. I, I I, really want a, like, scene later on in the game, um, or if this were, like, a campaign, right? Mm-hmm. Um, later on in the story of, like, all of the kids of the camp after they've gone through all their training, um, and they've been having fun LARPing, but now all the spooky stuff is happening. Oh. Um, I would love to have a scene where like we're down and out as counselors. And then all of a sudden, all the kids are like picking up their LARP weapons and like, no, we're we're standing with you. <gasps> oh, oh, we're no. going gonna to fight this together. Where you are. Oh, army. Toby, no. Toby. <laughs> Oberon, Oberon's the one leading them. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Oberon, like broke out of his, their shell, and they're the mm-hmm. leader now. Like they're they they took that role on. Yeah, oh. and I, I think I, I think it would be like because uh, I know child endangerment's not a thing for a lot of us. Yeah. Um, I th- I think it would be like enough to drive away whatever yeah. spooky thing was happening at that yeah. point. Yeah, like the kids stood up to it and it gives us, like as counselors, like we've been beaten, like we've been, we've lost, like, because like when the Linvor Max, like you can lose parts of camp and you lose mm-hmm. like memories and items and everything and NPCs, like maybe like a yeah. camp nurse has been hurt and like they're not at camp anymore, mm. um, you know, and now like, but this is like, this rallies us and we're like, no, this is, the get the, the campers remind us of what's vulnerable and why we're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man. And we like it's we so good. Yeah. And I think yeah. I'm gonna be terrible and say that like Baron is 100 percent would sacrifice themselves. Like oh, that's no. like their strong move. Like they redirect yeah. the Linworms move to them. <gasps> no. Oh, oh, oh. But first they would uh they would thank uh Margaret James for the help and kiss her. <gasps> oh, Yes. Uh huh. And I think there would have to be something like holding Margaret James back because I think uh, I think her feelings for Baron are a lot deeper than she even tells herself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, oh my gosh. <sighs> and then, yeah. like, I mean, we haven't even talked about like the birds in the forest, right? Like, how and like all realize. the omens of like these things coming yeah. up, and you know. <gasps> Oh like, yeah. I oh we would probably have both the murder of Chris and our lady Oubliette as our strangeness. Yeah. Right. I, I yeah. do I do like the thought of like birds that nest in the oldest tree of the forest <gasps> become those that are tellers of lies. Oh, mm-hmm. and we go to the oldest tree in the forest. Like that's like a central spot. <gasps> oh, and they're tellers of lies. Like as in like they reveal the lies or they tell the lies. Oh, they'd have to reveal because the lake's the liar. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, like, yeah, the birds yep. like tell us when someone's lying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I do like the thought of when the lake is deceiving people actively, that the either either the bird songs change or they stop. Oh. 
<gasps> oh dang. It's all cries of gulls or like like, like seabird. Th- yeah. But like I, it's like I like the the absence of bird yeah, sounds too. too is really creepy. Oh, that is yeah. creepy. That's very good. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Like Baron spends all their days fighting the lake. <gasps> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Is this too much? It's There's so a lot of good stuff to pull on. Yeah. But yeah. then, like, okay, so, like, oh. okay, we've got a lot of, like, uh, creepy scenes and, like, heartbreaking scenes. Like, there's got to be, like, some nice, like, sweet, gentle scenes, too, right? Right. Well, like, the soliloquy teach the kids magic? Like, how um, does, what, like, what are, what are arts and crafts with soliloquy like? They've got to be amazing. I mean, like, I think part of it, obviously, is, like, making the costumes and the props. And, right. You know, like, because it is a LARP camp. Um, but I also think, you know, there's there's some of that, like, craft worked in there. Like, like she's talking about them, about, like, symbolism in the things <sighs> that you make. And, oh, yeah. you know, like, if you, uh, you know, are sewing this pattern into your clothes, you're decorating it with this, in, you know, like. Um, she's talking about it as like, oh, it symbolizes this or whatever, but really it's more of like, this would be an omen of, right. You know, so it's not all because we don't talk about it. Right. We don't talk about the magic. So, um, yeah, I think she talks about it as like symbolizing different things, but it's, it's really not like historic or literary or anything like that. It's you specific know? to the camp. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, Oh, and there's definitely, because we have, like, the, the lake is horrible versus, like, the field, which is just happiness and relaxation and care. So I think there's yeah. got to be, there's got to be a specific camp game that gets played in the, like, the the field. Like, yeah. some weird version of tag that only exists at camp. Yeah. Like, like it's like, like oh, like, it's like a variation of the maple dance, maybe. Like, you have to run in a specific pattern. Yeah. <sighs> I like that. Yeah. Mm. I I I want a scene too, uh, where we are at the stargazing hill uh-huh. with the campers, and uh, it's right after we teach them about like constellations and using it for navigation and stuff, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, like practical stuff that you're going to need if you're larping it at night and whatnot. Um, and then things wind down, and and we just chill and and uh margaret james you know plays some music yeah pull pulls out the guitar and yeah. uh sings a nice peaceful song yeah just yeah. uh sitting yeah. there under the stars just cal- like real calm and just just lovely yeah you know like the kids are all cuddled up together oh, it's so good and peaceful oh, yeah and like there's like when it's when we can't hear margaret james we just hear the crickets Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I love it. And the stars. We see the stars, which is our sign of the magic. Yeah. Right. Oh. right. And so I think at that point, too, like, soliloquy is like pointing out constellations. They aren't really like star map constellations. They're, mm-hmm. you know, more meaningful. Yeah. Like the omen constellations. Right. Yeah. Or it's like, oh, we see this oh, constellation, so the stars in this position. It means this. Uh-huh. Oh, it's so good. All right. And we're all getting prepared. Like, in the meantime, we're still, like, creating items and, like, spells so we can protect the kids from the lindworm. Mm-hmm. Keeping the kids from knowing the lindworm beyond just, like, a scary story. Right. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. <sighs> Amazing. I, I think there's even more threads to pull on than that oh my but god i i think i think that's probably <laughs> my goodness a good place a good place to settle yeah yeah on the fanfic my this game has a lot that you can do in it yeah mm-hmm. is what we're saying mm-hmm. and i am here for all of it <laughs> right <laughs> oh. yeah i don't even i like i don't know what else to say you yeah. know like mm-hmm. I want to play this game. <laughs> Feelings. I have them. Oh, it's so good uh-huh. for this. Oh. The Ballad of Summer Court. Oh, oh so good. <laughs> Seriously. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Okay. Fine. We'll move on. Move on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, let's get into our advancement discussion uh, in a segment that Ryan calls Take It Up a Level. Take It Up a Level. Take It Up a Level. <laughs> <laughs> in this segment, we talk about character advancement and character growth. Um, how would a character level up, like, mechanically in this game? I haven't really seen seen much in here but we obviously didn't dig into like all of the rules so i don't know if there even is a way there's not there's not really a way for like the characters to level up i mean you you want to basically kind of get that stockpile of tokens so you can do strong moves Mm -hmm. um but i think what really happens is as you play like the the campground levels up in a way because as you play you know we we created that map and then we put in like we'd keep track of like motifs like oh like the lunch hall like bug juice and food and food fights you know and you start Mm -hmm. building these motifs um and we you know like using the settings moves to create items and npcs that will help us on the way um so you build all those up and like you know this crafter can do rituals to create spells um yeah and then eventually like, as we play the campaign like stuff ramps up and terrible things happen and we and then in the final act we start fighting the lindworm and anytime we have invited the lindworm to act we have put one of its playing cards in that spot and we have to give something up to say how we defeat the lindworm be it a spell or an item or an npc or one of our characters um as we fight the lindworm Mm-hmm. so like yeah so it's the the leveling up is in the story itself i would say where it's just build up everything to fight the lindworm um because yeah the characters don't gain xp or anything we just gain tokens yeah. and more heartbreak <laughs> it's, it's basically the story advances and yeah. and the the surroundings advance and more things get introduced and uh i assume more complications yeah can mm-hmm. get introduced as yeah. well yeah the, oh, the settings sure. elements pull and push people together and all that. Yeah. We didn't even talk about like what the lindworm does. Like like the the wolves and the bones do stuff. Like they'll destroy stuff. They can destroy setting elements and it gets it gets intense. It's already intense and it gets worse. Yeah, oh, exactly. I keep saying that. I'm just like, oh <sighs> I feel like that's half of the like when we do the transcripts for this podcast, it's just gonna be a lot of like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> But that's the game. Like, oh, I want that. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, none of it is like bad. It's like, please, please give that to me. Please let me have it. Yes. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, well, is there anything else that we want to say about Sleepaway before we we head out of the series? I think uh, go play it. It's a good game. It's really good really good good for what I'm seeing. Just cre- you know what? Just create a character and then write stories, right? Yeah, yeah. These would be like great journal prompts. Oh like- my gosh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the way it's set up, like you can do it. Like it's all card prompts, so it could be. Mm-hmm. You could solo play the game and hurt yourself real badly if you want to. If yeah. you're, if you like stuff, yeah, if like you're that. like me and, mm-hmm. and like to just like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. I I would love like a full table of oh, of God, this yeah. of all the of all the counselors and. Yeah, you sit around and you, you you put the strings together, and then it's like and then yep. the lindworm comes and cuts some of them and all of that, and it's just so good. And then like yeah, the, and then there's like the rituals to take breaks where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, this is this game is intense. Let's go out and look at the stars, which we did. We we had that in our fanfic, like the star watching's a ritual. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can go out and you just in character and out of character and just oh, oh, that's so good. There's so much to this game we didn't even talk about it. Yeah, it's it's like a it's it's basically it the rituals feel like it throws a LARP component yeah. into it too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. How how apropos. Yeah, like cuz I know there's a ritual you play as the campers. <laughs> yeah. Which is just so cool. Amazing. Oh, it's so good. This game's so much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, uh, Nicole, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Sleepaway. This was so fun. It's been my my pleasure and my heartbreak, and it's everything I wanted it. <laughs> like I'm so <laughs> glad, so glad to share everything it with I you. dreamed of. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, oh. uh, well, I'm glad that we could deliver. Uh, can you remind everyone where they could find you online? What sorts of things you're working on? 
Yeah, sure. Um, I'm still on Twitter for now as Phaedra220 and on Tumblr. Um, and if you love hearing my lovely voice and all the things I might want to kiss, um, listen to Misfits of Space. We have uh, two series. The first one was a Star Wars uh, game. And now we're doing a Scum and Villainy, where I am 100% playing a character that I am driving towards our own doom with a villain that my GM created. And <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> no, you'll turn them. Maybe. You'll Who bring knows? Them we'll back. see. Yeah. It goes both ways. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just just the, all these people I've been kissing. There's no repercussions from that. No. It'd be great. I don't see why there would be. No. <laughs> I hope. I re- honestly, I, the player, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's on Misfits of Space. Um, I'm also occasionally on the Redacted Files podcast and on something completely different with my two kids as Jackson and Mama. Wonderful. Thank you again, Nicole, for sitting down with us to do this. Um, it was a great time. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. I love the way that our little camp turned out. I love our little campers. They're so good. I love how everything accidentally kept pointing back to that honesty component. Um, I love my little song about crickets. I know. I I love that when we released the first episode and with zero context of why that song was there, people were like, I did not expect (laughs) to hear El Yeah. The number of people that were like, El Grio. And I was like, you know the song? (laughs) (laughs) Like my my one obscure Renaissance reference that Uh like everybody's like, yeah, I know that one. She's like, this is not the camp song I thought it would be. No. Um, No, it's fine. Uh, No, it was uh, it was a really good poll. Uh, I I really like the two. And this was my first time hearing it, I think. Uh, So I no everything about the series. I, I really enjoyed. It just all like fell into place so nicely. Yeah. Um, you know, like the like um currently Cersei. Yeah. Um, and then the, you know, like the potential like witch's hut and mm-hmm. you know, like it just it all it all worked it out all really came well. together perfectly. Yeah. I don't think there was anything in there that we we're like, we never came back to this. We never linked this to anything. Yeah. Uh um, and 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 uh Nicole had messaged me, uh she was on her way home. Uh, from something and had to stop for a possum crossing the road and not 30 seconds later a possum crossed the the road in the game like we were she was saying oh Oh, this is one of the portents this is one of the bad things that can happen is seeing a possum that should have been dead get up and start walking away it's like what a wild coincidence I mean yes but also possums do get up and walk away a lot that's fair but this was a possum skeleton. Also, did you check on Nicole this morning and make sure she's okay? I, I After didn't. her, I her have, possum portent? Although, although she did follow me on Tumblr, so uh, okay. I assume that okay. everything's Good. fine enough. Phew. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> yep. It's okay. Gotta watch out for those possum portents. I know. Uh, well, uh, before we let you go for the day, uh, if you haven't checked out... Uh, the Star Wall Odyssey of the Lucky Finn episode on the One Shot Podcast public feed, uh, or any of the other ones in the Secret Archive over on the One Shot Podcast Network, absolutely check that out soon. Uh, there's so much more coming right at the beginning of the campaign, uh, and I'm I'm working on uh, the next few episodes in the couple of weeks. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, and it's just so good so far. Uh, I, I'm really thrilled about this. Uh, you know, you got James Maldonado, as well as Ali Grower and Drew Merzieski, um, just superstars uh, in this campaign. Uh, still jealous Two about Amelia's absolute game. absolute power couples. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got, you got some amazing TTRPG power couples uh, just playing a fun campaign uh, with a... Uh, a, a new system that I'm, I think a lot of people are going to be excited about. So uh, really excited for that reveal to happen. Um, the next couple of episodes don't have the best audio quality due to a hardware issue in recording. But after that, it should be pretty smooth sailing. So I'm excited to get to those episodes. Uh, you can find all of this and more on the OneShot Patreon uh, linked in the show notes. 
I am getting ready to make my annual holiday cards, and I'm going to need to know how many to make. Yeah. If you would like one, you can fill out the Google form, which we'll have a link to in our show notes. Otherwise, I know I've posted it on Twitter and in our Discord and, I don't know, various places, wherever mm-hmm. they'll let me put a link, honestly. <laughs> um, I haven't quite decided what they're going to look like mm-hmm. yet, um, but every year I hand make my cards. They're yeah. all like personally written notes um, and they've turned out really nice the last couple of years. So yeah. I'm excited to do it again and I would love the opportunity to send out more of them. I was so thrilled can, to get mine last year. So I yeah, mean, I they said wait. last year. I loved last year. So. It was the flamingo, <laughs> little, right? Yeah. Little flamingos on it. It said yeah. warmest wishes. Had a little pineapple washi tape. Yeah, it was very so cute. Good. Um, so you can fill out the form um, in our show notes or around. Like I said, give me your info and I'll send you a card. There you go. Uh, we would like to start sending out a monthly newsletter as well. And we'd love to know what kinds of things that we should be putting in there. Um, our goal is to talk a little bit more about our thoughts on the month's game. Uh, maybe some links to similar games or media in that genre. Uh, recommendations of things we're into right now. Uh, a rundown of what was posted on our Patreon and a few other things. Uh, we would absolutely love to hear what you think we should add in there. Uh, and what other stuff do you want to know our thoughts on? I think this will if be a nice place. If you've ever been, you know, sitting at home thinking, gosh, I really wonder what Amelia and Ryan think about this. Mm-hmm. Um, now's your chance to let us know what that thing is. And we can we can use our newsletter space to let you know. Yeah, we'll have That's... a nice little fun little section of the newsletter to have our thoughts about um, chocolate mm-hmm. sauce or yeah. who knows what else. We could we could just do um like a little debate section of like we each take a side on something and you know <laughs> can do you know fire versus water or oh there you go uh, coke versus Pepsi or oh man <laughs> we each each take a point uh, see where that goes <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um this is your weekly reminder that we still have a Patreon still there um. It's still there. (laughs) Now is a great time to check it out. We know that money can be a bit tight, especially around this time of year, for sure. Mm. Um, But we've been doing a little extra lately for all our patrons uh, to kind of make sure you're getting your money's worth, even at the $1 level. So for just a dollar a month, you get access to all of the bonus outtakes, as well as a special chit-chat episode of Ryan and I just chatting about life. It's the the stuff we sit down and talk about before we actually come record it, our, our scripted mm-hmm. stuff. There are no bullet points for that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Goes wherever we feel like. Uh-huh. Um, it's a great way to get to know us better. You'll be getting those practically every week. At the $5 level and higher, we'll be giving everyone an ad-free feed, early release episodes, and bonus episodes where we learn about other games. It's usually micro games right now, Mm -hmm. um, through the lens of character creation and sometimes actual play. If you join us at the $10 level, you also get to join us for monthly Zoom hangouts, Mm -hmm. um, which right now we're doing a little bit more frequently to make up for the fact that most of the summer we weren't able to do them. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, if you join now, uh, free bonus hangouts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can check all of that out at patreon.com slash character creation cast. And once you do, we can thank you personally. Like we are going to do right now uh, for Lieutenant, We appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also appreciate your support, David, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus. Thank you. Eric Bonds, thank you so much. Uh, Matt Newton, thank you so much. Shadim Cabal, we really appreciate your support. Thank you. Daryl Holiday II, uh, thank you for your support as well. The Shyest Barbarian, thank you for your continued support and for uh, our lovely... (laughs) Our lovely Zoom hangouts. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the unhinged uh, patron chat channel that happens yes, in the Discord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks um, for being you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Benjamin Sweeney, thank you for your continued support as well. Uh, Lurkin McGinnis, we are so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Rob Fletcher, many thanks to you. Kevin Brown, thank you for all of your support. And Tentacle Duck, we appreciate your support as always. Thank you. And also your name. Yep. (laughs) Someone has to say it every time. (laughs) 
Thank you to all of you and to all of our future patrons. Your assistance is really making a difference. Um, Ryan was able to get a brand new microphone that he won't shut up about Mm -hmm. because of your contributions. You can all decide whether that was worth your money or not. Um, (laughs) I mean, I don't want to discourage anybody from following our patron, but also don't get Ryan any more techie stuff. Just don't. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's too late. Uh, but also it does help us keep the show going, so we do really appreciate it. It's true. Finally, if you aren't able to support the show financially, there is an easy way to help us out that doesn't cost anything but your time, and that's to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or Podcast Addict. Uh, or if you can leave a rating on Spotify, that also helps. Uh, especially if you want to get a nice little gift for Amelia for her birthday, which is tomorrow. Yay, tomorrow. Happy early birthday, Amelia. Thank you. (laughs) And yes, I would really love reviews for my birthday, please. Yes, I would love reviews for your birthday as well. (laughs) I would love reviews for your birthday. Aw. Friends forever. (laughs) That's it for this series, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. For those of you in the United States, we hope you have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves, take some relaxing breaths to loosen up those shoulders, drink some water, eat some turkey, take a nap, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us, under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. I nailed it. Me too. I I think I might be slightly like tiny off because Chromebook. How are you looking over there? I see waveforms, and they are nice and as big as my waveforms ever get, because apparently I have a very quiet voice. All right. Sorry, I have to yawn. <laughs> oh, I can't stop today. You need more Dr. Pepper. I only have one left. Mm. No. It's an emergency. Like saving it for tomorrow. Dr. P Good. emergency. Because I'm going to need it for a Monday, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. You go to the pick and save and get three cases for get, sale yeah get like eighteen thousand <laughs> cans for two dollars no, <laughs> it's only 12 bucks <sighs> all right okay we can we can hit stop on this recording here okay and uh, this is the stop button there's the stop button I- e- Woo! there we hey, go we clicky i feel like i need to like adjust waves are waves are waving yeah I got, I see them. My tiny little waves.
Little waves. The waveforms. Mm-hmm. Sorry, like lost our spot. I was listening too much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did it. We Yay. did it. We can hit stop on this one too. Okay.